Hello and welcome to Video Podcast 4.4. This is the final vodcast for Chapter 4, and in it we will focus on wind erosion and sand dunes. I don't mean to downplay wind erosion. It does occur, and its greatest influence is in desert regions. But wind is the least effective erosion agent that we've considered. As mentioned at the end of the previous vodcast, flowing water and glaciers are far more effective erosional agents. If you look at the picture of this man pointing to where the ground surface was when the grasses began to grow, we see that wind erosion does play a role in desert regions. Over time, wind erosion lowered this land surface about three to four feet, and that's a pretty significant drop for a surface. So the question is, how did it occur? Let's talk about deflation. And in the image on the right, we see a nice illustration of the deflation process. But as deflation begins, you'll notice that the very fine sand grains are the ones that get moved by the wind. The larger sand grains aren't moving because the wind isn't strong enough to move the heavier pieces of sediment. Well, as time progresses, more and more of the fine sediment will get blown away, and what gets left over are the larger pieces of sediment. Eventually, you will form what's called desert pavement, which is basically just all of the larger pieces of sediment that the wind wasn't able to move, and all the finer sediment has been blown away. But what's kind of cool is over time, desert pavement can be lifted. In other words, the surface can be raised through the process of deflation. Over time, those really fine sediment grains will settle into the cracks and pores in desert pavement, and they'll work their way to the very bottom. Well, once again, when enough time progresses, a lot of fine-grained sand particles will have accumulated under the larger desert pavement sediment pieces, and we see that the surface will be raised given enough time. Our final consideration in this chapter are sand dunes. Sand dunes are very prominent desert features, and they're one of the first things we often think about when we think of desert landscapes. Sand dunes are mounds and ridges of sand that are caused by wind erosion. In terms of sand dune formation, the sand will actually be deposited on the leeward side of the dune. When we use the term leeward, we mean the side sheltered from the wind. The windward side is the side that the wind is coming from. Generally speaking, the leeward side, or the sheltered side, will have a very steep slope, but the windward side slope will have a very gentle incline to it. In the image shown at the right, we would be looking into a headwind, meaning that the wind is coming right at our faces. And if you look at the zoomed in picture of this sand dune, you can see the sand accumulating on the leeward side of the dune. This leeward side of the dune has a very steep face, and if that face gets over steepened, you'll see some of the sand start sliding down the face, which is called a slip face. Okay, that concludes this video podcast, keeping it short and sweet. And this concludes Chapter 4. As we move into Chapters 5 and 6, we'll shift our focus to plate tectonics, earthquakes, and mountain building, and things of that nature. Okay, until next time, I will see you in Chapter 5.